your operations are the heartbeat to your business. I created this podcast to help you balance your childlike innovation with parent-like efficiency. Welcome to Daily Ops Boost. Yo, what's up, crew? Welcome back to a, another Daily Ops Boost. Took a couple days off here and was just traveling over the last few days visiting family. So had to take care of that and make sure that I spent time with the people that raised me at the end of the day. So uh, just wanted to make sure that I gave the gave it the time and attention. So I apologize for the lapse in a couple of episodes here, but we're back on the daily grind episode 28. And jumping into agencies that are just stamping guarantees on paid ads, not even thinking about the repercussions of the ads that they're running. So let me break down what the FTC or the Federal Trade Commission, for those that that don't know, uh, actually say about guarantees and what you're actually able to run on ads. It might surprise you a little bit and you might have to rethink your strategy a little bit. Um, And I'm not saying like the FTC is going to come hunt down everybody that runs a guarantee behind their ad, but they have come after quite a few people and have successfully find them and put put that agency or service-based business in a really tough position to continue running. So under the Federal Trade Commission Act, advertisers must follow three specific rules. Okay, One being ads must be truthful and non-deceptive. Number two, advertisers must have evidence to back any claims of guarantees that they might have. And advertisers cannot be unfair, right? And basically uh, on that unfair statement, just kind of talking about uh, they can't be unfair in their claims. uh, And if they are claiming something and say they have a guarantee behind it, then they need to be able to uh, either uh, refund that person in full if they don't hit that guarantee. So advertisers cannot be unfair. So let's break it down just a little bit further. What what makes an advertisement deceptive exactly? Well, according to the FTC, running an ad that is likely to mislead consumers, uh, acting reasonably under the circumstances, or material that is deceptive to it to a consumer decision to buy a product or service. So so two two things there, right? Uh, one, if it's actually misleading, and if what you are uh, proposing, what you're advertising uh, is, is not reasonable, okay, under specific circumstances. And the second one being material that is deceptive to consumers uh, uh, or consumer decisions to buy a product or a service. So you are basically coercing someone into buying the product or service because the guarantee or something about the ad is so grandiose or so big that they feel like, hey, like I really should buy this because uh, I can't lose, right? And so the FTC will look at these these claims in kind of two different ways, right? Team, real quick, if you're on ClickUp, you're going to want to download this client management template pack, especially if you run an agency. I'm going to leave it in the show notes for you. It's 100% free. Go click the link and download the template back. And, and there's two types of claims that we often see inside of advertisements uh, on Facebook, YouTube, all those things, okay? Uh, the first one being express claims uh, or expressed claims, uh, which is basically just a claim that is plainly stated. And, and these are the ones that we see probably most often of like, hey, we guarantee you 2X revenue in 90 days or you don't pay for the service, right? And, and this is something that we see a lot of times with uh, consultancies or agencies that are running some sort of claim of, of monetary increases guaranteed or they don't pay, right? So that's an express claim. Now, an implied claim is a claim that is made indirectly and would be uh, unreasonable to believe it was true, right? And so an example of this would be like when people do like a bunch of case studies and like, hey, uh, Bob doubled his revenue in just 90 days, right? So that's a claim that's being made based off of someone else's uh, uh, circumstance, whether that's true or not, if it is true, uh, it makes the consumer or the person uh, uh, looking at the ad make it feel unreasonable that they wouldn't succeed if they bought. Okay. Now, there must be evidence to support both expressed and implied claims, right? And this is where people tend to get in trouble is that uh, evidence, evidence does not include things like case studies from happy clients, right? Like just because you have a case study around it 
doesn't mean that that's enough evidence to support the claim of a guarantee or even money back guarantees. Uh, once again, uh, even if you say like, hey, we'll guarantee you this result or we'll give you a 100% refund, okay, that still is not enough evidence to support the claims that you're having. Now, of course, if you're doing full refunds, uh, there is a little bit of a safety net there because, um, you know, uh, at the end of the day, like if you give the money back, like it's kind of like no harm, no foul. But a lot of people have very stringent guidelines around what constitutes a money back guarantee, right? And there are certain conditions that clients must follow if they sign up for it, and they must hit conditions precisely in order for uh, that guarantee to take place or in, in order for that money back guarantee to take place. So this is where the waters tend to get murky though, is that the Federal Trade Commission focuses mostly a lot of their attention on health and safety, right? Things that can like physically affect us or the actual like well-being of a person, okay? Which kind of boxes out a lot of the agency offers that we see on paid ads. And so with that being said, like there has to be evidence to support your claims. And the, the quote that the FTC kind of gives is that it has to be competent and reliable scientific evidence evaluated by people qualified to actually review it. Which is like, where do you get something like that specifically for an agency? It doesn't really exist. There's not really a, uh, there's not really a guiding principle or a guiding organization that says, hey, like, this is proven to actually work. Kind of like, um, I can't remember, uh, I think it's like the FDA, right? The Federal um, Drug uh, Drug Administration or F Food and Drug Administration, there we have FDA, Food and Drug Administration, right? There is a, a actual body that regulates things like this, right? So if, you know, someone was like launching like a new toothpaste and they said, hey, like this is proven to whiten your teeth 50%. Well, you could run that through the FDA and get an FDA approval, which would say like, hey, this actually increases your smiles brightness by 50 percent okay you could get that fda approved okay now this doesn't exist for the agency world so how does your agency actually get evaluated through something like this well that's where our trail kind of dead ends and exactly why i will never recommend an agency to guarantee an offer is because oftentimes we can't support the claims that those guarantees are going to happen and then also, there is no backing or there's no, uh, 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 you know, commission or uh, federal government led um, uh, led um, organization that is going to qualify and evaluate your service. Okay, and at the end of the day, the risk is not worth the reward, in my opinion. So I just stay away from guarantees because there's so many blurred lines around it, and it's not worth the FTC coming after me because I made a guarantee. To just make a little bit more money that's all i got for you guys today hopefully that's helpful we'll see you in the next one peace yo thank you so much for listening in to daily ops boost we really appreciate your attention if you're enjoying the shorter form content you're gonna absolutely love the long form content that we post over on youtube we do a live stream every single week 7 p.m central time go check it out it's on youtube it's called agency therapy we'll see you over there